Hey, welcome. This is Metal Sharpens Metal, and my name is Daniel. Today we have the song Fracture by the band Veil of Maya. They have been in my playlists for a while now, just writing crushing breakdowns and awesome riffs. This song is exceptionally spicy and zesty and all the all the right things in this in this pot of ingredients. You are gonna enjoy it, I think. So let's go check it out. All right, we got a new view today because of how the the video is laid out and the lyrics and where they go, just it's whatever. But the point is there's no music video, um, but your ears will be overwhelmed enough. Let's check it out. <laughs> Woo! That intro. <laughs> All right, now you can breathe a little between this and the next riff. It really doesn't stop though. Step action. a nice ballad feel. But then this part is very different. The spookiest of sounds. Okay, how their lead guitarist is Mark Okubo, and can we just talk about the flutters and the guitar effects in that first riff? Like, what in the world? <laughs> Who thinks like that? It's truly mind-boggling how they make their guitars sound like that. It's got that chaotic insanity going on, uh, and that's going to tie into the lyrics, I think, pretty appropriately. But it's like he has these ridiculous ideas for each new album that they put out. He'll He'll have one or two or three songs that really stand out as like, and how long you've been holding on to this? It just sounds bonkers. One of my favorite YouTube comments on this song, uh, I think it was on this song in particular, and find it was something like, I hope he's not trying to catcall my girlfriend with these guitar sounds. <laughs> All right, so the song today comes from an album called False Idol, and it's a concept album basically detailing the rise and fall of a genocidal dictator who at the end reveals that he feels sorry for what he's done and, and ends up taking his own life. Too far! <laughs> 
is not a very warm and cozy story, but it's still w really well written lyrically and I think has some interesting takeaways for us. One thing I think about in regards to this song is its relationship with Breaking Bad. No, I, I don't mean that. I don't mean that either. Okay, dang it. Yes, Jesse almost does look exactly like Lucas. What's this bad? He told me to sing. Okay, so that's the vocalist. His name is Lucas Magyar. I think that's how you would say it. And yeah, he's got some skills too. Uh, he has got quite a range with his screams. He can sing. He can do all that live. He's, he's trained himself very well. So they are a powerhouse of a band. They're drummer too. I mean, he plays lefty. So that's, that's already like you overcame the greatest difficulty in life doing that, Sam. So hats off. <laughs> But what I mean is, much like Breaking Bad, this song is detailing without necessarily glorifying the life of somebody who becomes very powerful and but is also doing very wicked things. Walter Wright from that show gives us lessons about how our actions affect those around us and how our pride can quickly become the downfall for us and them. I'd say one lesson from the album, I mean, it might be a little bit on the nose, but it would be to prevent despotic leadership from trying to take over your country. I get it. That's easier said than done. In some places, it's too far gone. And a lot of people have very differing opinions about what even is despotic leadership, right? But I think it's still something we need to analyze whenever we're looking at political leaders. It's something that we need to be very clear with our worldview about how that interacts with the politics of the situation. I don't believe there are any political leaders who can save us ultimately, or take back our country, or turn us around, enact just the right legislation, anything like that, without the will of the people for the most part. There were some notable exceptions to this rule in the past, but it only happened by the grace of God. And there are usually bloody battles and turmoil just getting us to that point anyway, such as when the U.S. abolished slavery. Abraham Lincoln once said that if you're a racist, I will attack you with the North. So if politicians arise as a result of the culture around them, then we need to analyze our culture's views in order to understand why politicians are acting the way that they are. We know that pretty much anyone in the world wants power. Uh, even the people who say they don't, a lot of them do in different types of ways maybe than the very visible ones of like a despotic tyrant like this. But we can still see how somebody comes to power based on the culture around them that allowed them to get to power. I think another lesson we can pull from this is kind of the microcosm of this story playing out in our own souls. John Calvin said that our hearts are like idol factories. They, we, we manufacture idols like constantly. So we have this tendency to set up little dictators in our hearts willingly. Anyway, just something to consider. I think that this story can be taken as more than just a post-apocalyptic, you know, futuristic sci-fi type type story. So Fracture is the first song on the album with lyrics in it. So it kind of sets the stage for what's to come. So let's look at a couple lines here. All right. So it starts by saying uh, their bodies fall. Yikes. <laughs> and uh, he wants to tear the flesh of these peasants. Hmm. Up here, he called himself the immortal, the immortal judge, basically. That's heresy, my friend. So yeah, definitely a very bad guy that they're describing here. And he's doing a good job. I mean, these these lyrics, I'm, I'm joking around, but they are very descriptive and creepy, honestly. So later on at this end part, kind of the bridge here, we have this singing part that almost sounds kind of sad. When he, when he sings all on their knees, the weak will weep. You know, I don't think the political leader is actually sad because he says, I smile at the dead. But, you know, it's at least foreshadowing and, and uh, pointing towards the suffering that he's causing. And then there's that, that bridge that if I had to classify it, I would call it Halloween core. It, I said it was spooky in the song because it had like that odd theremin, you know, type instrumentation going on that accompanies so many old school monster movies. I think it's really fitting for that line. I smile at the dead, you know, just a creepy guy in the middle of his own monster flick. And even that chaotic intro outro riff, I think really lends itself to the concept of a like explosive political upheaval as well. So yes, the lyrics are of a creepy, horrible person, but I would still call that a fun song because of, you know, the style of the music and all that stuff. Really like listening to it, obviously. And I think it is sometimes entertaining to tell and read stories to people about an awful person doing crazy things, and hopefully we can gather lessons from it. But it's only good as long as you can kind of keep yourself separated from that mindset. I'm not one of those people that thinks video games drives people to violence and all that stuff, but I think it'll feed and amplify certain parts of your mind that, that, uh, reflect who you really are inside. You know, Heath Ledger is somebody who comes to mind as somebody who is driven mad by his method acting while he was playing the Joker for the Batman movie. When you dwell on darkness for that long, it's not surprising when it starts to have an effect on you. And, and because of that, Christians are called to renew their minds daily uh, in God's word. We are called to live in the light that we've been that we've been pulled into out of the darkness. And we are called to focus on the fruits of the spirit. So we see that we want to wash our minds constantly in the things that are good and 
and not be dwelling on the dark stuff for for that whole time. I don't think that that means we can never look at dark stuff or ever, you know, never tell ghost stories or, you know, fun things like that. But we would hope that they have the effect of instructing us and warning us against the dangers of sin and pointing us back to our need for Christ. So keep an eye on what your heart is desiring. All right, thanks for joining me today. I hope that analysis was helpful. I hope that the guitar voices that you're probably hearing in your head don't linger too long. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. So anyway, that's the uh, vocalist. His name is... How in the world do you say that? Okay, why am I in full? I can't take face. Yeah.